In today's video, I'm going to be modifying my Atari ST to install a GoTek, which is a floppy drive emulator or replacement. As the years go by, original floppy disks become less reliable. The drives fail, the belts fail, the disks fail. So fitting a GoTek is a sensible thing to do. However, fitting a GoTek to any retro computer is a very contentious thing. And some of the builds I've seen for the Atari ST are highly destructive, requiring the case to be mutilated, shall we say. Now, the device I chose has, I think, minimal impact on the original case. So here's our GoTek. And you might think there's not much to this. It's designed to fit into the ST via the existing floppy mounting point. So it has a custom made bracket, so it's easy to fit. But if you look at the business end of it, there's not much there, just a couple of buttons and a USB socket. No rotary knob, no LED display. So what's the story there? Well, this particular GoTech design comes with this, which is a control panel, like a little heads up display that fits on top of the ST. So let me show you how that's gonna look. I'll grab the ST. So this unit is going to fit on top kind of like this. In fact, if you look at the thumbnail of this video, you'll know exactly how it's going to look. You know, you're going to be able to use this rotary encoder to select the disc you want to mount and then click the knob to mount it. Now this enclosure has little tabs that will help align the display with the slots atop the ST, but I'm not going to push it into those slots because as I say, I really don't want to damage my ST if I can avoid it. Right, so let's start by opening the ST up. And I'm using this uh, admittedly pretty scorpulous looking piece of cloth to keep the ST off the tabletop. And to take the case off, we need to remove just the screws in these square recesses. Now, you might notice they're already gone. So here they are, all seven of them. Now, these three screws here in the round holes are the ones that hold the floppy in place. And we'll be removing these in a bit. Once the screws are removed, the case comes apart quite easily. The only thing to be aware of is that as you lift it off, you have to kind of move it sideways slightly. And that's because this bit here kind of gets caught up on the floppy drive. Strangely enough, once we put the GoPro in, that won't be a problem. We need to remove the keyboard. Just let us get in there. Okay, so having a look around, here we have the floppy drive that we're going to be replacing. And you can also see this, which probably won't be in your machine, but it's a four meg memory upgrade that I did in um, 2022. And in 2023, I updated the version of TOS to 104. And kind of up there somewhere, there'll be a link to a video where you can see how that went. Comedy upgrade, if ever there was one. So to get us going and give us a little more room, I'm going to remove this plate. And ignore that green wire. That's just tying the ground on the memory uh, expansion module to the case. OK, we'll disconnect the cables to the floppy, which is kind of easier said than done. I managed to make quite a bit of work out of this. Now we're going to pop it over and we're going to remove these three screws here. And obviously when we remove those three screws that secure the floppy disk, drive, it's going to fall out. So I'm kind of supporting it underneath by hand. I'll fast forward through this. There's the drive out. Now, if I turn the case over, I'll pick up the screws that fell out. Looking at the area where the floppy was, there's this little brass post or ferrule or whatever you call them that fell out with the screws. Now for floppy disk drives, this forms a dual purpose. Uh, the pin on the top is a locator to properly seat the floppy before you put the screws in. But it also ties the ground of the floppy case to the ground of the motherboard. You know, screwing the GoTech in is pretty easy, but since that involves standing the ST up on its edge and using both hands, I'm gonna do that off screen because it's just a little too complicated. I anchor the GoTek on the pin from the brass post and put the first screw in, which is the one that's kind of diagonally opposite, just for ease. 
when we're, when we're attaching this, what we're doing is we're using non self tapping screws going into a plastic tube, if you like. So there is a possibility that if you disassemble and reassemble this several times, the screw won't attach properly in the future, but that's not a problem for us. Okay, so I'll take the ST away and let's talk about the top of the case. So the next stage of the process is to get these connectors and cables through these slots. Now there are two orientation of connectors, like a male and female. And inside the case, they have cables with the same colored wire with the opposite polarity. So it's actually very, very easy to assemble and very difficult to make a mistake. So what I'm going to have to work out is how I get the connectors, which are about two millimeters square through these slots that aren't two millimeters wide. Now the eBay page that I bought this from says to pry them apart from underneath. I'm going to experiment with that off video because again, I'll need both hands. Right. So here we are. And you can see some of the wires are part way through the case. If I zoom in here, we should get a better look. Now I had forced these uh, slots apart. So it was quite difficult. As I say, I'm trying to use a metal spudger, this one, and I'm trying to locate the air wire through the slot. And on the other side, I'm trying to use the spudger. And at one point I was using my cheek to press that. So, so it was a bit of faff. And it sounds pretty violent, but I think if you look closely at these gaps where the wires go through, compared to the ones next to it, I don't think it caused much of any damage. So I'm going to do the last set of cables, which are these, and I'll get back to you when that's done. So now we have the GoTech installed and solid. We need to wire the connectors from the case to the board inside. Interesting thing I hadn't noticed until I watched this footage back was the power connector and the data connector are swapped on the GoTech compared to the floppy. Now I'll put this metal plate back on and reconnect the ground for the memory upgrade. Cover in place. I'm going to record the date of doing this for the future. I'll pop the keyboard back in. That's quite easy. It's got a simple connector that has a locator pin, so you can't get it in the wrong way around. Now we need to connect the two halves of the cabling and I'll skip to the end. With the case closed, but not screwed together, I'm going to do a quick sanity test because you know, if you screw the case back together before testing, it won't work. Never does. So I'll connect up video on power. You insert the USB stick that came with the device, just so we have something to see. And yeah, the display looks nice. Let's try and zoom in on that. So we can see the rotary encoder is working. I can move my tracks, clicking it selects the item. So we're good to go. So I'm going to screw the case closed and then I'm going to take the ST upstairs to my office and I'll show you how this thing works. Now, apologies that the camera I was using to record downstairs isn't the one I used to record upstairs and it has a different refresh rate. So unfortunately, the screen on the GoTech does flicker. I apologize for that. And the other thing is, I think the ST screen capture clipped a little bit off the top of the screen, but again, didn't notice it at the time. I've started the ST up. The GoTech says it's running in auto start mode. And this launches an app on the ST called floppy flash file selector. According to the documentation, this selector app is somewhat legacy. If you don't have auto boot present on the GoTech, then the device just lists all of the images in the root of the USB and you can select them just using a rotary dial. However, I like this interface, so I'm going to stick with it. In fact, I think this is the best thing for running ST games via a controller in a cabinet, for example. So the file selector has two screens, this one that lists the available images on the USB stick and a second one that allows you to assign a selected file to a slot, which I will cover when we get there. Images can be nested in subfolders. And since my ST is running in monochrome, let's pick an image from my mono folder and I'm going to select Zork three. Right. When I hit enter, we land on the slot assignment page. So originally, or actually still quite frequently, GoTex have a three digit seven segment LED display on the plate that sticks out the side. And the slot number was the number you would select on that display. And that was done by button presses on the device or by a rotary encoder. Slot one is the slot that will be loaded at cold boot. So it's like the floppy you left in the drive in your last session. 
We will see later that you can disable this in the settings. So pressing enter puts Zork 3 into slot 1 and jumps back to the images selection page. And at this point we can press F9 to save the current config and reboot the system. Or we could have pressed F10 and it would save the config and reboot automatically. On the desktop, here's our A drive. Now, this floppy image doesn't have an auto folder, so it's not going to uh, run automatically. You have to just open it from the desktop and we can see it here. As I double click Zork 3, have a look at the LED display down there and you can actually see the tracks that it's reading. So you can, you can see that, it, um, that it's doing things. You could optionally add a speaker to the GoTech board that would make floppy sounds as it read tracks and sectors. I've already mentioned that slot one is like the auto boot disk. And there's a shortcut that allows you to assign an image to slot one and reboot immediately. So here I'm in my monofolder again. I'm going to highlight Zork 2. And then I hit F7 and it's going to assign that to slot one and just reboot. And there you can see it's Zork 2 now. The USB stick that came with the GoTech has a folder named Games that has nearly 5,000 disk images in it. And scrolling through that is really slow. You can press F1 and that allows you to enter a filter. So I want to find the Indiana Jones games and I type Indy and press enter. And it reduces the selection to just images with that in the name. Now that was relatively quick, but that's because I have a relatively few images on this disc. Try doing that in the folder with nearly 5,000 items in it and it took an age. So if you want to run with that number of files, I would really suggest it's time to start creating subfolders for each letter of your alphabet and moving the files into them. So you can access the help by pressing the help key. It's not a trick key. You can freeze frame this if you want to see the details. But the only thing that I haven't really covered on this page is I think that backspace clears a slot. So on the second page of help, we see that F2 changes the colors and F3 enters settings. So let's go back to the main page and we're going to hit F2 to swap to black text on white background. And then for completeness, let's hit F3 and go into the settings. Now you can enable that track step sound if you have a speaker fitted, but I didn't, as I just said. You can set how long the display stays lit without any interaction. So the last two options are interesting. Load auto booted power up is useful if you want to use the GoTech in cabinet mode every boot. And eject disk at power up alternatively is useful if you keep for getting there's a disk in and you boot and you end up playing a game when what you really want to do was go to the desktop. And for me, since most of the stuff I do is productivity apps from a hard drive, that's how I usually operate. I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.